Hello and welcome to Rule Breaker. Today we are going to show you how to play Terraforming Mars. This game came out in 2016, um, designed by Jacob Frixilius, and the edition I have here is published by Stronghold Games, and it's from Frix Games. This here is the game board. There is a bit of setup that you're going to have to do here. You'll get these three large white cubes in the box. These are markers for different stages of the game. You're going to put one of these up here on the oxygen track, which is this uh, ribbon at the top here. And you're going to put that on the 0%. Um, then another one of these is going to go down here on the temperature track, right at the very bottom on minus 30 degrees. And the last one is a way to gauge what round it is. And you stick that down here on the number one on this big track that goes around the outside of the board. Each player is going to have a bunch of these colored cubes. Um, you can keep these beside your player mat, which I'm going to show in a moment. But you've also got to stick one for each player onto the number 20 up here on this track. Um, and that's basically that each player's uh, place on the terraforming rating track. That's what this uh, symbol here means. And um, you're going to be getting income based on this number each round, which I'll explain shortly. I'm going to stick a green one here beside the blue one for the purposes of demonstrating a two-player game. There are also nine ocean tiles. You're going to want to get those and stick them up here on the board. And the temperature gauge, the nine ocean tiles and the oxygen track are what are going to dictate the end of the game. So when this um, moves all the way to the end here, this moves all the way to the top here, and all nine of these ocean tiles are on the board, the game will end at the end of that round. But before it can end, it's got to start, right? So I'm going to show you your player boards now. Okay, this is a player board. Each player is going to have one of these. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to take, again, these little colored cubes again, and you're going to put them on the start of each of these tracks. So you're going to put one here on your money income, zero. One on zero for the steel. One on zero for aluminium. One on zero for plants. One on zero for energy. And lastly, one on zero for heat production. There are lots of different resources in this game, but they will all be used um, with the same pieces from the game board. So these little colored cubes that I'm showing you here are used to represent every different resource in the game. Now, this was the first kind of stumbling block that I came across when trying to teach this game. So that's why I'm going to tackle this with you right at the very start. Uh, these big gold pieces are worth 10 of any resource. These silver ones are 5 and these little bronze ones are 1. So for example, if this big gold guy was here on the money space, this would count as 10 money. If it was on the steel space, it would count as 10 steel, 10 aluminium, 10 plants, 10 energy, 10 heat okay same for the little the little silver guy that would be five money that would be five steel etc a little bronze guy one money one steel and so on so if i had a big gold one and a little bronze one there that would mean that i would have 11 money to spend in this round hope that makes sense it took quite a while for us to get our heads around that when we were playing this game if you manage to increase any of these production uh, tracks, for example, say you got something that made your plant's production go up by one, at the start of the next round, you would get a free plant in that space there. If you had a production of five, say, in steel, you would get um, five steel every start of every round, which would be very nice in this game. Um, you don't necessarily need to take these silver ones for five. You could take five of the little um, bronze ones if you want. So that could be like this. These guys are the same as one of these. So whichever you want to use, just think of these as 
markers for what they're actually on. There's also a whole load of these little hexes with a city on one side and a greenery on the other. They're going to be getting placed on the board. And there's also these uh, special tokens. There's a white city. Um, you're going to use that with a very specific card. And all these brown ones are similar in that way that you're going to use a specific card to place these down on the board. You don't need to know um, what any of these things mean. They're all basically going to do different things based on cards. Speaking of which, there are a lot of cards in this game. So there's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of these play cards that are going to form a draw deck. And there's also a lot of cards for the corporations. When you are playing your first game, you are recommended to use a beginner corporation. Now, what this means is that during setup, you are going to get 10 cards into your hand and you're going to get 42 gold on your player mat. So in this case, on your player board, you would add 42 worth of money to your space that has the money symbol on it. So in this case, I'm going to use four of the big gold guys that are worth 10 and two of the little bronze ones that are worth one. I could easily have just used a couple of these silver ones instead of that 10, just, just to emphasize that it doesn't matter which cubes you use as long as they add up to the right amount. So 42 money is now available to this player and they've got to get 10 cards. So let's give them 10 cards from the draw deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So in the beginner game, the player has these in their hand. Um, ten is a lot of cards. And the reason why it's like that in the beginner game is to give you lots of different options. Um, I'm going to show you what the other corporations do instead now. So if you look here, um, the beginner corporation cards have this kind of faded grayed out version of the uh, the background on the card. It's kind of hard to see on, on the film. You can see this is a lot more colorful here. The red planet and the, the earth-like planet. These are quite gray here. Um, so the beginner corpse have that background so you know not to mix them with the other ones. And all the beginner corpse are the same. They all have 42 gold and they all have the 10 cards. Um, there's a lot of other corporations which are for more advanced players. I would highly recommend that you play your first game with the beginner corporation to get a grasp on how things work um, without getting into debt with money and stuff like that and um, digging yourself into a hole. So I would use those in the first game but I'm also going to show you how these um, expert corporations work now and they work very similarly to the other one just that they all have a different sort of thing so let's have a look at this guy first uh, this is phoblog um, instead of getting the 42 money this player is only going to get 23 money so significantly less but they're going to get 10 of the uh, titanium um, with that and they also have this special effect where titanium is worth an extra resource so i'll explain what that does now if you look here on the titanium section you'll see that titanium equals three and what that means is when paying for cards if the card has the titanium tag on it a titanium can be used to reduce its cost by three so with a normal corporation let's say we've got that out of there you're a beginner corporation if I had this card and I wanted to play it, it's got the titanium tag. And if I had a bunch of titanium there, I could spend these two titanium to reduce the cost of this guy by six. So three for the first one and three for the other one. And I would, I would spend those. That would make the cost of this one 25 money. So if I had the 25 money, I could play for this one here. For Foblog, that titanium that I showed you a moment ago will be worth four instead of three. So if I'd used those two titanium, I would have got a reduction of eight instead of six. Um, there are lots of other um, corporations. So there's this one here, Ecoline. Um, what they do is they get uh, 36 money, three plants, and they also give you two plant production. So let's have a closer look at that. Okay, so this is Ecoline here. Um, the player would get 36 money, so that's 30, 35, 
36. They also get three plants, so I would stick these three here. So these would be plants, not money, because they're in this space. And they also get the two plant production. So this track would move up to two. Um, if you note, the background on this section of the card has this kind of hatched brown uh, texture to it. That's also the texture on the tracks. So anytime on any of these cards that you see this brown background, it means to improve the track, not take cubes into its section. So this would be Ecoline's typical um, starting setup. Uh, note that none of the um, advanced corporations like this one or Foblog mention anything about cards um, so far. That's because um, in the standard game, not the beginner game, um, you don't start with cards usually. And just to show you a couple of other ones, um, there's Teractor, which is another one. They start with 60 money and any card that has this earth tag on it is reduced by three when you're paying for it. Um, there's also this one, the Mining Guild, which is kind of like the Foblog, except it's for steel. Um, they get 30 money at the start of the game, five steel, and they have production of one on steel here. Um, they also have a special effect to do with that stuff. Um, Helion here, they have 42 money and three heat production, plus they can change heat into money at any time. And there's a whole bunch of other ones that you'll be able to figure out once you've played a game or two. And the iconography really starts to make sense after you've played a game or so. Um, so that's corporations. Okay, so I'm going to show you how the game starts um, if you're using an advanced corporation. Um, this is also applicable if you're using the beginner corporation. It just doesn't really kick in until the second round. So you would do the first round without this step you're using beginner corporations and then every other round after that you would do what I'm about to show you now and what happens is each player is given four cards one two three four and then they must decide if they want to keep any of those cards so let's have a look at the card okay so I've drawn these four cards one is a green bordered card which means that it's persistent um, on your thing face up but it's only got a one use uh, thing so you'll do the stuff on the card and then you'll kind of forget about it for the rest of the game until scoring I've drawn two of these event cards which mean this arrow here in the corner means that when you play it you're going to take it turn it face down and you're kind of going to forget about it for the rest of the game more or less as well um, the only exception is this blue one here uh, space mirrors which has an action it's an action card so you're going to be able to use this card each turn once and that's what that arrow means here so if you wanted to, in this case, you could spend seven money uh, to increase your energy production by one. And in order to do that, you would uh, tap the card, kind of like you would in Magic or Game of Thrones or any of those card games, to show that the card has been used for the round. So even though you've drawn these cards, they're not actually yours. If you want to keep the card, each one that you want to keep is going to cost you three of your very valuable money. So let's say, for example, I really wanted this card, and I really wanted this card. Um, I would have to spend six of my money, and the other two cards that I didn't choose, well, they would just get thrown into the discard pile and gone from the game. These two cards would go into my hand, which I would have for the duration of the game. If I don't play these cards in the round that I got them, I keep them for as many rounds as I want until I play them. Uh, you don't lose the cards that you've bought unless you use them for something. Um, so in this round I could pay the money for either of these to get their effect. Uh, just to show an example of this, so let's say that we wanted to play this here, um, Immigration Shuttles. Um, we'd have to pay 31 uh, money, so that would be almost all of the money here. So it would be these three cubes and this one little cube. They would go back into the supply and then you would play the card face up and do the effect. So in this case, you've paid the cost. These tags are not relevant right now, but if I'd had titanium, I could have used it, that's what this symbol is here, to pay for this. I didn't have any at the start of the game. And this earth tag here, that comes into play with other cards later. Um, some cards have things in the top here, which are prerequisites. I'll show you one of those in a moment. Uh, this one doesn't, thankfully. And the effect here is, 
increase your money production five steps. And then at the end of the game, you're going to score one VP for every three cities on the board. It's a pretty good card. So this five would be here, and it would go up. And at the end of the round, I would get five additional income. So for the sake of uh, just uh, completion, let's just say that this is the end of that round. And this player is counting income. First of all, they would get two plants because they have a plant income of two. So they would go here. They would get five money, but they would also get their terraforming rating on top of that. So if you remember from a moment ago, that starts at 20. So this player is going to get 25 money. So that would go here. Now, you may also have noticed that 25 is a lot less than 36. So you might feel like you've got a lot of money at the start of the game, but it's going to take you a while to build and build and build that money income again. Okay, I'm just going to show you the anatomy of some other cards that you might have drawn in your hand. Um, I'm not going to show you every card in the game because that's a mad thing to do. There's a lot of cards like this is this is the deck here. It's that's crazy amount of cards. I think it's like 200 and something cards. Um, but I'll show you a few so you get a kind of a cross section of different things. So let's start with this one, Rad Suits. Um, it costs six. It doesn't have any um, tags like steel or aluminium or titanium, I should say, like this one does. So you're going to have to pay with money for this one. But it does have a prerequisite here. And I don't know if you can see that very clearly. But it's two little city symbols that match the uh, city tile. So what that means is you can't play this card until there are two of these out on the board. So if there are two of these out on the board, you'll now be able to play this card. And what its effect is, um, it increases your money production by one, much like the other card just did. Uh, by five a minute ago and this big number one in the Mars um, icon means that it's worth one victory point at the end of the game so it's pretty good value it's cheap the prerequisite is um, probably going to be unlocked relatively early in the game because people tend to want to build cities as quickly as they can in this game and the benefits are good money income is always good points at the end of the game help you win the second one here is called Beam from a Thorium Asteroid. It's a really sci-fi looking card. Um, it's really expensive, it costs 32 gold, 32 money I should say, that's my Game of Thrones talking. Um, and it has a prerequisite of this um, planet thing here, it's called a Jovian planet. Now it is on this card itself, but this card can't be a prerequisite for itself. Um, I chose this card just to ensure that nobody makes that mistake. You've got to have a different Jovian card in order to play this one. It has a really powerful ability which is that it increases both your heat production and your energy production by three and it's worth a point at the end of the game. You can pay titanium for it and the energy tag on this side doesn't mean you can pay energy it just means that um, other cards that require you to have energy tags as prerequisites much like this one has for the Jovian tag, um, can be unlocked by this one. Okay, I know that seems like a lot to take in, but just remember, prere prerequisite, uh, benefit, victory points. Okay, and the last one I'm going to show you here is Shuttles. It costs 10. Um, it can have titanium as a um, cost for it, and what this does is it... Um, reduces the cost of any card with the titanium uh, tag on it by two. It also requires that you reduce your energy production by one and increase your money production by two. Now you cannot play this card if you don't have the energy production of one, at least one. You need to be able to reduce this in order to play this card. Um, as for the prerequisite here, it's 5% oxygen. So the oxygen track has to make it to 5%. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Okay, we're back up to the big scary board. Um, it does look like there's a lot of stuff on this board, but it's actually really simple to understand once you realize that you can kind of ignore a lot of it most of the time. What we were trying to do was increase the oxygen track to 5% in order to play that card. 
Now we can't increase it to 5% in one go, but we can increase it by 1% each time we build a greenery. So how do you build a greenery? Well, first of all, this is a greenery. It's the opposite side of the tile to the, to the city. And we build that by spending eight plants from our player board or by using one of these standard projects, which are like cards that are just printed on the board. So if I had eight plants here, it even shows you on this section, you can spend those eight to put in a greenery. And it also has a really tiny little oxygen symbol, which is the one that matches on the track. So I could take these eight, they're gone, pick up a greenery and put it on the board. So you can put it anywhere on the board except for these blue uh, spaces. They are reserved for the ocean tiles. So let's just say I wanted to put it down, I put it down here. I would then take one of my player's uh, colored cubes, which is say I'm the blue player, put a little blue cube down there to mark it for me. If I put it down on that space, there's nothing there so I wouldn't get any bonuses. But if I had put it down on say this space here, which has this card symbol, I would draw the top card from the deck like this and I would just get it into my hand. I wouldn't have to pay the three money for it. So that would be mine. If you put it down on a space that has symbols matching a resource, like these two steel, if I put it here, I'd add two steel um, like the cubes here onto the steel section of my player mat. It could be two titanium. Well, that's an ocean tile, but just using as an example, one titanium there. It could be two plants, one plant, one steel. Um, this one is a plant and a titanium and so on across all the different board spaces. So once I placed it, let's just say I put it down on one of these ones for now, I would increase the oxygen track by one. Now, something that's very, very important and that you may forget when you play your first game, but something that I'm going to try and drill into you here is that every time you increase the oxygen track, you inc also increase your terraforming rating. So this guy would move up by one. And not only is that important for end of the game because this is your victory points track, but remember your income is based on your terraform rating plus your money production. If I just take the player board here um, and show you again, just so you can see it, this symbol here matches this symbol here. So at the end of the round, you're gonna be getting your position on this track plus the money production here. So try not to forget to do that. It's easy to get carried away with learning and doing actions and stuff like that. Um, but ensure that you always remember to increase your terraform rating when you're increasing the oxygen on the oxygen track. Another thing that can happen to increase your terraform rating is placing an ocean tile. So much like the way you can spend 23 to place a greenery, you can spend 18 to place an ocean tile. And as I just said a moment ago, that's what these blue sections are. Um, reserved for. Uh, ocean tiles, there's nine of them in the game and it shows you that here, nine. Once they're all gone, um, that's one third of the way through the game as pre prerequisites for ending. So if this track was all the way up, all nine of those tiles were out on the board and this term temperature track was all the way up, that would be the end of the game. So you kind of want to be getting through that stuff um, if you spend your 18 to put in an ocean tile, again, if there is a resource on it, you would get those on your player mat. So if I put it here with the two plants underneath it, I get those two plants straight away. Um, two cards up here, two steel here, two titanium there. Uh, unlike the greeneries, which you can uh, kind of work towards with your resources, there's no resource that just gets you um, ocean tiles like the plants do for greeneries. It's really all about the money here or cards that have place ocean tile stuff on them like this ice asteroid card that we looked at earlier um if you played this you played two um ocean tiles in a row so let's say we did that we paid 23 money 
we do the effect on this card which is place two ocean tiles if I put this one here I'd get two plants if I place this one here I'd get a card now each time you place one of these ocean tiles much like you do with the oxygen track you also increase your terraforming rating which to reiterate because it's so important you want to do it it's points at the end of the game but it's also income at the end of the round um, the other thing that increases your terraforming rating is the temperature gauge if you spend eight heat much like the way you spend eight plants from your board to put in a greenery if you spend eight heat from your player board you can increase this by one space and that also increases the terraforming rating which again I'm going to reiterate it because it's really important victory points and income really important don't forget it you may also have noticed that there are these um, things sticking out of the side of the temperature gauge what these are are if you look at the texturing behind the heat symbol here it's the same as the production track on your player mat um, like I described earlier it's this kind of brown hatching here if you increase this to the point where it hits the point where this is you would increase your heat production by one so if you manage to spend eight heat or whatever it is you're doing to increase the temperature get it to this point you would increase your heat production by one there are a couple more of these kind of bonus um, milestones on your tracks there's this one here that has an ocean tile at zero percent so if you manage to move this um, marker up to the zero percent you get your terraforming rating for increasing the temperature then you would also place an ocean tile on a valid on a valid spot and then you would also increase your terraforming rating again because you've placed an ocean tile um, also you may see here that there's a temperature icon on the oxygen track if you're the person who moves the oxygen track from seven to eight you would increase your terraforming rating by, by increasing the oxygen then you would increase the temperature gauge and then you would increase your terraforming rating again it could even be that you combo this up nicely by increasing the oxygen to increase the temperature to place the tile and that's perfectly valid you'll be able to do all of those in one go I figure that now is probably a good time to explain the rest of these standard projects. I kind of I call these the cards that are printed on the board because they're basically like infinite amount of cards that have the same actions on them that you can do at any point on your turn as long as you can pay for them. Um, so I'm going to go from the bottom to the top in this case. Um, pay 25 to put a city on the board and then also get a money production. This is the main way you're going to be putting cities down on the board and that's really important, I'll explain why in a minute. So if you spend 25, you can put a city down onto the board, put one of your little player cubes onto it and also increase your money production by one. So it's very valuable, it's totally worth doing. Um, you'll see why it's good for points when we get to that part of the video later on. Um, I've already explained greeneries and um, aquifers for the oceans. There's also one called Asteroid for increasing the temperature track. You spend 14 and you move the marker up on the temperature track. The other two are spend 11, it's called Power Plant, and then you increase your energy production by one. Um, you may remember earlier on, one of the conditions to play a card was to reduce your energy uh, production by one in order to play it. You'll see that quite a lot on some of the better cards. Uh, so this is a easy way to get your power production going and the top one here is um, sell patents what that is basically means if you're stuck for money you can uh, dump cards for money so if I had say two cards that I didn't want I could toss them out and get two money so along with these standard projects the other actions you can take on your turn are to pay for your cards as I've shown you earlier um, but we haven't really spoken about the flow of play um, it's quite straightforward really if it's your turn um, there's a player marker here for first player um, if you have this you are first player that means you take your turn first um, each player may take one or two actions on their turn and then the next player takes their turn um, so for example you could play 
this card and do a standard project. You could play this card and another card on your turn. You could do two standard projects. You can do kind of anything you want. You can also just do one at a time. You could do like play a card, wait, let the other people go and then do another single action or double action later. Um, the important thing to note though is that once you pass, you can't do any more actions for the rest of that round. Just before drawing those new cards, you would of course do your production. So you would increase your money by your terraforming rating uh, plus your money production and do the same for all of these. So this player would get a bunch more money, um, like so, whatever it is, 30 something. Uh, they'd get two plants, as I've shown earlier. And then the next round starts with getting cards. And it's the same as I showed earlier, but basically, each player is given one, two, three, four cards. Let's have a look at them, decide which ones they want, and say, I just want to keep one. And then you would spend three money per each card you want to keep. So in this case, I would spend this shiny silver cube, which is worth five. Get two of these little bronze ones back and change. And this card would be in my hand, ready to play later. And that's how the flow of play works. There are two more parts of the board that you need to be aware of, and they are the milestones and the awards. So let's take a look, first of all, at the milestone section. Um, so if you have a quick look here, it says milestones. It's got a big five here, which is um, the Claimer's Prize. And it's got these three eight money uh, icons. So first claim, second claim, a third claim. And then it has these five different symbols. Now, what this 888 eight, eight means is that the first player to to um, want to claim one of these um, can pay eight money to put their cube down on whichever one they've already done. So it, this is not, I spend eight money at the start of the game, put it on a thing, and then I get the points if I uh, meet them towards the end. You have to have already done the thing before you can spend eight money to put the cube down on it. So, for example, if I have built three cities, that's what this is here, three beside the city icon, um, then I can spend eight to put a cube down here, and that's one of the three potential ones that can happen in the game. Um, if I manage to build three greeneries, three greenery symbol, I could spend eight money to put the cube down here on the gardener. If I play eight cards that have the builder tag on them, I can spend eight money to put my cube down here. If I have played 16 cards total, uh, minimum, in my tableau, um, I can spend eight money to put the cube here. And the last one that I'm gonna explain here is the terraformer one, which means if I've moved my um, cube on the terraform track all the way up to 35, I can spend eight to put it here. Once any player has taken a particular milestone that becomes locked for everybody else. So if I take mayor, nobody else can take mayor. Um, if a different player was to already have the three cities, it doesn't matter. They wouldn't be able to take mayor because I've already locked it out. Um, if somebody else came along and took uh, gardener, I wouldn't be able to take gardener because they've locked that out. Um, and then at the end of the game is when you would score these points. So it's very important not to give yourself the five points on the terraforming track immediately. You get these points at the end of the game. Awards work very similarly to milestones, except that the costs change. So if you gamble um, on one of these five, you can pay less than the guy who waits it out for the third one. Now, unlike milestones where you've got to have the thing to unlock them, any player can unlock these at any time as long as they can pay for them. Um, so I could at the very, very start of the game decide, you know what, I'm going to spend eight money and I'm going to unlock um, Landlord. And what that means is at the end of the game, the player who has the most tiles down on the board gets five points. However, unlike milestones, two players will score for every award. So even though I unlocked Landlord, somebody else may get second. In fact, somebody may get more tiles on the board than me and get the five. It all depends on the performance of the player throughout the game. 
if um, I spend the 8 on Landlord and another player wants to unlock Banker, they must play 14. Or if I've unlocked Scientist at the start and they want to unlock Miner, they have to pay 14. It doesn't matter the order of these, you don't have to go left, right, nothing like that. You can pick anyone you want. Um, so the Landlord one is for tiles on the board. The Banker one is who has the highest money production. Again, note the brown hatching background that matches the player board for the track. Um, this scientist one here is whoever has the most of this science symbol on cards and other things that they may have acquired. The thermalist is the most heat. Now note that it doesn't have the brown hatching background that this one does. It's literally heat on the player board that has accumulated over the game. And this can get really high, by the way. This is really competitive if um, somebody's going for it. And the last one is Miner. It's a combination of steel and titanium. Again, not production, actual cubes on the thing, on the player mat. And yeah, that's the awards. Okay, so the game is gonna end when these tiles are all down on the board, the ocean tiles when the temperature gauge hits plus eight and when the oxygen track makes it to 14%. And when that happens, the game is going to end. The round that you're currently on can finish as normal. And then there's also a chance for players to produce one more time. And then they also have a chance to spend any plants that they might have had as a result of that production to build maybe one last greenery on the board. Once that's happened, it's time to total up your score. Adding up your score starts with the milestones and awards that I just explained. So any player that's unlocked a milestone gets five VP for, for achieving that. Any player who has the best on the awards gets five and second gets two. The way you actually count your score is by advancing your cubes along the terraforming track. So whatever you've managed to accumulate during the game counts as VP and anything on your milestones and rewards is added to that. So in this case, say if I had had the milestone for greenery, um, I would get five points. So I would add one, two, three, four, five along the track like this. Same for rewards. Then you also score for stuff on the board. Um, this is a combination of greeneries and cities. You don't get any points for ocean tiles and to be honest, you wouldn't know which ones are yours because you don't mark these like you do the other ones. Um, but let's look at how you score cities and greeneries. In a typical game, you're probably going to have a lot more cities and greeneries than this, but I'm just going to use a few to show you how it works. Um, you start up by um, counting up each VP for your greeneries. So um, you get one VP for each greenery that you control. Uh, so the blue player here would get one, two points that they would also add to the terraforming track. Um, the green player would get one point because they only control the one here. Um, then you score cities, and cities are interesting. Um, you don't score for the city tile itself, but you score for each adjacent greenery to a city. So the blue player here would score one, two points for being um, adjacent to these two greeneries while the green player would actually score one point for this city. Even though they don't control this greenery, because their city is adjacent to it, they would get one point for that. They don't get any points for uh, being near but not touching this uh, greenery over here. Um, if this green player had placed their city here like this, they would also have gotten two points instead of one because they're beside two, not one. Then you just basically go to your cards. Let's just say that these are my cards that I had um, during the game. Um, this here is where the victory points on cards are. So this card is actually negative one. So that would remove a point from me. This one is plus one. And this one is one point for every two bacteria on this card and that's uh, something to do with this card so during the game you will have been using this um, tap action to add bacteria to this card they will be um, denoted by the cubes much like the other resources are so that's one bacteria that's two bacteria 
uh, the silver is worth five, so that would be seven bacteria. So if I had seven bacteria on this card, it would be worth three points. You don't round up, you round down. Uh, so three points for this card. So this would be three plus one is four minus one is three in this case. And you would add that three to the terraforming track to see who is the winner. In this case, uh, the blue player has 96, the green player has 94, the blue player is the winner, obviously. Um, and that's how you play Terraforming Mars. I'm going to just explain a couple of other little weird little rules um, before we wrap up here. The first one is energy into heat. Now I didn't want to go into this one while explaining the player board because I didn't want to scare you off before you got to the end of the video and decided you didn't want to play the game anymore. Uh, it's not as bad as it looks. Um, basically if you have production on energy say this time it's three you would have that three energy just for this round at the end of the round when you are doing production again you would move all of your energy over to the heat area and then add the next three like this um, so you're converting energy into heat here I've also got one on the heat so I would get the one for heat like so um, that happens every round. You can't store heat from round to round. Basically, you always got to move it over into the heat area um, at the end of the round. I never really showed you these in action, um, but now that you know how to place tiles down on the board, they behave exactly the same as those. So if I was to, say, for example, bring the board back over here for a second, and if I was to place any of these symbols, like this nuclear symbol, down here on this space, um, I would get the two steel under it and block that space off from other things being built there. How do you build those things? Um, they're based on cards. So if we see this card here, the restricted area, you'd pay 11 for this guy. It has an ability. And then it also says here, place this tile. You would look for the tile that matches the card and you put it on the board and you could get a bonus for it. And that's all it really is. There's no, as far as I know, at least not in the main game, I know there's expansions coming out for this game, but in the main game, um, these different symbols don't really have an effect on the board. Um, they're just related to the specific card and they're kind of done then once they're on the board and you don't need to worry about them anymore. Um, the ability on this card is to uh, spend two money to draw a card. Um, I just wanted to reiterate the fact that when you tap a card like this to do this ability, you can't do that ability again for the rest of the round. But when the round is over and you're counting your uh, income, you always um, stand these cards back to be able to be used in the next round. So you can reuse these once every single round in the game. I found the rulebook in this game to not be super clear all of the time, but the one page that is really good is the symbols page. Um, there are a fair amount of symbols in this game. Um, and they all mean different things. So if you're ever unsure of what one does, I'd recommend having the rule book handy with all of these here um, available. Another couple of little things. Um, you may have noticed this space here, Phobos, Space Haven, and Ganymede Colony. Um, they relate to specific cards. You'll know what to do with these when you draw those cards. They're basically gonna tell you to put a city down on each of these, and um, they don't do any special abilities. Um, they do count towards Landlord, um, which is one of the awards, but they obviously won't score you any points because they're not going to be next to any greeneries up there in space. Um, another tiny thing, um, you might have noticed this word here, solo, beside 14. Um, you're only going to use that if you're playing a single player game. So you would start the um, game on the 14 space and count down towards 1. Um, and the solo game involves you having to get a certain amount of points before this track finishes up. I'm not going to show you how to play the solo game in this video, I might do it again another time. It's quite fun actually. Um, I'm not a big solo gamer but this game is quite puzzly and has a, the right amount of luck for it to be interesting so if you are into solo games I'd recommend having a look at that yourself. And that should be enough to get you started with Terraforming Mars. Um, this game is really fun, it's a good strategy game, I like it a lot with three players, uh, it's the number of players I play with most, but it works pretty well with two and it works pretty well with four, um, I haven't played it with five, and the single player mode is actually quite playable as well. Um, 
If you have any questions about other rules in this game, because it is quite involved, feel free to comment on the video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, there are a lot of cards in the game and you're probably going to get confused by how some of them work throughout play. What I would recommend to you is though that you look up BoardGameGeek.com, uh, look up Terraforming Mars there, and there's generally a question in the forums for some of the fiddlier cards. And there are a couple of them that might make you scratch your head at first when you're not so sure how the game works. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you learned quite a lot about the game. And if you did, please share it with other people. Um, especially those who are going to come over and play it with you. Make them watch this video first, it'll save you a lot of time. And yeah, and subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with as many people as you can, get the word out try and spread the word for the channel and I appreciate it if you do so thank you and come back soon I hope